Okay, so what I've done is I've downloaded the documentation set from Oracle and extracted it into a directory. If I navigate into here, I'll find an index.html, which I can open up in my favorite browser. Okay, there it is. Now, notice that I'm, I'm actually browsing through files. Okay, so if you look at my URL here, it's file. Okay, this is fair game, I think, because this is the documentation. The only thing we can't do is use this thing up here. Okay, because if I type in something like, uh, I don't know, create table space, because I can't remember how to do that, I click on search, and uh-oh, it redirected me to the internet to actually perform the search. So that's clearly off limits. But as long as I stay within the file system of the directory where I've extracted everything, then I should be good. So the first place I highly recommend everybody reads is this guy right here, Concepts. It's easy to go through so many years of being a DBA and never have read this book. That's okay, I understand, you're busy doing real work, but read it. Okay, there's a lot of good details in here that, that really just cover the baseline of what you really need to know of how Oracle works, all right? It's a lot of theory. It, it's gonna seem like you're going back to university or whatever, but let, trust me, this is not university, okay? This is just a, a commercial product, one particular implementation of a database, and one way of looking at the world, the Oracle database way. So read the concepts book. I recommend you go over here and you grab, uh, you grab the PDF from this page, or over here on the top right, you can grab the PDF Mobi or EPUB version and put this on your favorite ebook reader. Notice that when I hover my mouse over this in the bottom left of my browser, it clearly shows me that even the PDFs are in the, the offline documentation set that I've downloaded. So I am staying within the non-internet documentation here. The nice thing I like about the PDF is it's laid out just like a real book. I mean it really is like a book. <laughs> And uh, not only that, you can also see how many pages the entire book is. This one, I believe, is about 400-something. Okay? So, Concepts. Another book I highly recommend, another two books I highly recommend you familiarize yourself with are the Reference and the SQL Language Reference. The SQL Language Reference is awesome. You see, I just went into that book. Now, check it out. Let's say I want to look up Create Table Space. You, you firstly need to know that to create a table space is probably something to do with the word create and something to do with the word table space. Now watch this. If I go to expand all, that's going to open up all these disclosure triangles. And then what I can do is control F in my browser and type in create table and look at what it does. It takes me right to that link. I click on that and I want to confirm that I am reading this all from my file system. Take a look at my URL up here. Okay, file. So there's create table space, and if I scroll through here, there's the full syntax, all the possible options. So that's the reference. That was the SQL language reference. Now how that differs from the reference without the word, you know, this is, that was SQL language reference. Now we're going to look at reference. If I go to this manual, this contains a list of, of all my parameters, of all my data dictionary views, and if I scroll down a little bit further here, all my V dollars. Very cool. Okay, so if you're looking for something, you can't remember exactly which view does what, you can quickly find it in here. But when I say quickly, keep in mind this is not that quick. So you might say, hang on, I don't remember what the view is called. Look at what you can do. You can grab the PDF. I don't know if a PDF reader will be available in the exam environment but let's just say it is, then you can grab the PDF file, open it up in a reader, and then search through the PDF, which is the entire book, you know, the full text of it. If not, you can grab one of these two files and then grep through it, and you can find the text in there. But best is to actually know generally what you're looking for. And again, Control F on the browser is your friend. Now, if this was Mozilla or Firefox, there's another keyboard shortcut. You can hit the forward slash key on your keyboard to open up a search window down here and quickly just type what you're looking for. And since the OCM 
documentation says that you get Mozilla, or you should be familiar with Mozilla, then you can use that shortcut. That is the forward slash on the keyboard. And one other book, yeah, by the way, don't read the reference or the SQL language reference from cover to cover. That's not really a good use of your time. Admin guide, however, you should read cover to cover. Okay, as an example, very quickly here we can see creating and configuring an Oracle database. You're going to say, oh, come on, right? I mean, if, you, if you're studying for the OCM, you should already know how to do this, right? Well, hang on. Creating a database with the create database statement. Let's say you're not allowed to use DBCA. So what would you do? You open this guy up, and you scroll through this doc, and look at this. Step by step, what you need to do, set your variable for Oracle SID. Make sure that Oracle Home points to the right place, too. And then, if you need to create a password file, then go create a password file. And then, create a P file. And, of course, you only really need one parameter, right? I mean, DB name equals foo. Control files you don't even need because we're about to create control files. And as soon as we do that, uh, we'll add the parameter to your SP file. Now, that was a P file. Uh, we don't care about the Windows stuff. Connect to the idle instance. There it is, connected to idle instance. And convert your P file into an SP file with your whopping one parameter, db underscore name. And then bounce the, the instance, so shut it back down, and then start it back up, no mount, to, um, to get it to use the SP file instead of the P file. And then start the instance. Oh, wait, right, I, just, I just said that, start up no mount. And then finally, create database. And there is the massively long statement that you could potentially even just copy and paste within the exam environment. But be careful with copy and paste. You probably want to toss this into some uh, text editor, like so. Now, you might have gedit. You might have to open a terminal and use vi or nano or something like that. It doesn't really matter. But the point is, this is kind of cool. Before you submit any statements to your databases, uh, it might be a good idea to put it into a text file. Maybe keep a log while you're taking the exam. Okay, that way you can sort of follow in case you forgot. Did I do this or not? You know, you can quickly see a log of all the changes you've made. It's very easy to get flustered in the middle when, you, when you're a little bit pressured. It's kind of like fighting a fire in real world. Okay, so, so that's the documentation.